Most people dream of one day becoming a millionaire, leaving the rat race behind and being extraordinary. And I was just like most people. This is probably about seven years ago. This is a paycheck from Domino's Pizza. And I'm just gonna read it to you in case you can't see it. I worked 195 regular hours. I worked 44 overtime hours. My net take home pay is $1,092. Now I just got done with an annual review meeting with my team for my seven figure business that makes over a million dollars a year in sales. And today I'm gonna break down five millionaire habits that changed my life. I once read a saying, how we spend our days is how we spend our lives. And I combine this with your life will not change until you change something you do every day. And looking back on the days when I made a thousand dollars for working 200 hours or whatever it is, not too much has changed except for a couple daily habits, things that I do every single day that have a profound impact on my life. And I'm confident that you can implement these in your life too and completely change your financial destiny. Now, why am I so confident? Well, that's because there are 35,000 non-employer businesses in the US alone who net over a million dollars a year. That means 35,000 people who don't have any employees and they net over a million dollars a year. Now combine that with the fact that there are 11 million millionaire households in the US and you don't have to be that special to become a millionaire especially in this country. You just need a simple set of daily disciplines that you can do over a long enough period of time that you actually change your life forever. And I'm not talking about 30 years. I'm not talking about 40 years. I'm not talking about not buying that coffee that you want. I'm talking about things that can drastically increase your earning power because that's what you need if you want a rich life. You need to not worry so much about small little expenses, but focus on drastically increasing your earning power. I believe it was Newt Gingrich who said, are you hunting elephants or field mice? So are you spending all that time and effort coupon clipping so that you can save $3 this week? What if you took that same amount of time and you put it into some of these millionaire habits and you actually 100x your income? And that might sound ridiculous, but I've done it. So let's go through the five millionaire habits that you can use to change your life today. Millionaire habit number one is solve a big problem for people. When I say big, I usually mean a problem in health, wealth, or relationships, but it could be a problem in another area, but you want it to be such a big problem that people will pay to have it solved. Now you can either choose to sell vitamins, preventative medicine, something that makes people better over time, but if they don't take it, they don't really notice today, or you can sell what's called painkillers. These are things that immediately remove pain from somebody's life. So if you're selling a painkiller in the wealth space, maybe you help someone increase their earning potential this month, okay? So sell something that solves a big problem that is currently very painful for the customer. Now, if you're not in business, this is a general life philosophy. How can you start helping people solve their problems? Because the easiest way to make a million dollars is help a million people solve a dollar problem, right? Or help 10,000 people solve a hundred dollar problem. It really comes down to simple math. And I learned this in the book, The Millionaire Fastly by MJ DeMarco. He said the way to make money is scale and magnitude. And what he means is scale is how many people can you help and magnitude, how big is the problem? And he says, if you can get scale, you can become a millionaire. If you can get magnitude, you can become a millionaire. If you get scale and magnitude, you become a billionaire. So scale and magnitude are all about helping people solve painful problems in their life. Again, they want the painkillers, solve that problem that is painful for them right now and adopt that as a general life philosophy and you're gonna change your financial future. Habit number two is how I spend my free time. Now, I heard someone say the only difference between rich people and poor people is how they spend their free time. I like to monetize my free time. So there's a couple of things we need to address here. First is you should be learning in your free time, constant and never ending improvement. That is the way of progress if you wanna be rich in life. So can you spend that free time instead of entertaining yourselves, actually making yourself better? And then we have the switch between producer and consumer. Because being a consumer is very easy. It's very easy to consume stuff, to entertain ourselves, to turn our brain off. It's even very easy to become a critic, to criticize the things that we are using to entertain ourselves, the things that we are consuming. But what's much harder and requires skin in the game and you actually be publicly accountable is becoming a producer. That's making things and putting them out into the world and then getting that feedback. 
Now, the hard part about being a producer is when you first start, you're going to be terrible at it and nobody's going to like your stuff. But the only way to become a good producer is to keep producing. So for example, if I go back and I watch the first YouTube video I ever did, I'm not perfect now, but I'm a lot better than I was then. So the way to produce good stuff in the long run, whether that's making a physical product, whether that's creating media, whatever it is, writing, movies, music, is to create bad content in the beginning. Create bad products first. And if you do that enough times, you're gonna learn enough that you can actually create good products. So spend your free time learning and producing instead of entertaining yourself and consuming. That's habit number two. Habit number three is find something good to say, say it well, and say it often. Now, if you watch stand-up comedians, the good ones at least, they go up on stage almost every single night. Sometimes they'll jump around from club to club and they'll go up five or six different times a night, seven nights a week. Now, why do they do this? It's because you cannot create something great for the world in a vacuum. Meaning you can't sit at home in your house and write stand-up comedy and expect it to work out on the stage. The only way to get it to work is to take it on a test run every single night and see when people laugh and refine it over time. Now, stand-up comedy is an obvious example of this, but this applies to business. This applies to art. It applies to creating music or writing a TV show or creating a movie or creating a product or teaching an online course or selling a service. All of these things are made great by refinement. And refinement occurs when we get it in front of the market and we subject ourselves to the humiliation of being up there on stage. Now for us, it's being on the stage of life. But for stand-up comedians, it's being on the stage in that club. They get immediate feedback faster than almost anyone else. The way we do that is we put our products and our services, we ship it out to the world, and then we see what comes back and we do that over time. And again, we refine our message we find out what people respond to, what they want more of. And then once we hit on that message and we know that's what people want, then we do what comedians do. We take that show on the road and we do it over and over again. So this could apply to your marketing, but it could also apply to product development. So the point is iterate until you find something good. And then instead of continuing to iterate, continuing to come up with new material, you need to just repeat what's already working over and over again. That is the harvest phase of plant cultivate harvest if we want to bring in those millions of dollars. So we find something people want, say it well, say it often. Millionaire habit number four is use leverage. Now the traditional form of leverage people think about is financial leverage. So if you think about if you want to buy a home and rent it out, you can get a loan from the bank and that allows you to buy a home that's more expensive than you could afford with cash. And you're actually leveraging that money to bring more money back in. Now, a lot of us aren't starting with tons of money. We might be starting with nothing or even be in debt. But the good news is there's other types of leverage. You've heard me talk about financial leverage a ton on this channel, but we also talk about technological leverage. So that's using things like digital media, online courses, licensing deals, things where you can leverage yourself over and over again. So think about the musical artist who goes up there on stage. He plays an amazing show. He makes money for that show. How does he get leverage? He records an album so he can sell it over and over again. And this is one of the funniest things to me when people sell online courses and their critics say, if you love doing the thing so much, why are you selling an online course about it? It's called technological leverage. It's like saying to the musician, if you love playing live shows so much, why are you selling an album? Why don't you just keep playing live shows? It's how you create multiple sources of income and you use leverage to clone yourself. So rich people are going to use leverage. They're going to use financial leverage, they're going to use technological leverage, and they're going to use one more piece of leverage, and that is human capital. Human capital refers to bringing in a team to do the things that you're not good at, so you can focus on your zone of mastery. You can just focus on what you enjoy doing every day, get really, really, really good at that, go deep on that one thing, and then allow the people around you to fill in all the gaps. So if you can use human capital as leverage, you can get so much more done than you could ever get done on your own, right? How are you going to change the world by yourself? It's going to be really difficult. But if you bring in an amazing team and they're aligned with the mission that you're on, you can do great things. So that's habit number four is learn to use leverage, which most people don't have any leverage whatsoever. And habit number five is take 100% responsibility for yourself. There's something called power thinking where you think not what is true, but what is most useful to you. Okay, 
So somebody once said in a book, they said, if you drive out at night at midnight and you round a corner and a drunk driver hits you, whose fault is that? Well, in reality, it's the drunk driver's fault. He swerved across the line and he ran into your car. But as a business owner, as a millionaire, whose fault is that? It's your fault. It's your fault for going out at that time. It's your fault for driving in that area where there could be drunk drivers. It's your fault for not avoiding him. Everything is your fault. And that's not because it is true, but because it is useful. The only way that we can act in life and have any control over our lives is if we take responsibility for everything. If you're in a victim mindset, blaming people for your problems, blaming politicians for your problems, blaming your local government, blaming your family members, or your friends or the economy. What good does that do? It might make us feel better in the moment, but over the long term, it's not giving us the power we need to have an impact on our lives to get results. So that's habit number five is no matter whose fault it is, take full responsibility because that's what's going to allow you to act and actually have an impact on the outcome. So those are the five millionaire habits. Number one, solve big problems for people. Number two, the only difference between rich people and poor people is how you spend your free time. Spend your free time learning and producing. Number three, find something good to say, say it well, say it often. So you need a good marketing message that resonates with the masses and the way you get that is by testing over and over again. You know, there's the saying, the master has failed more times than the beginner has even tried. I think that's the dumbest saying ever because the master has failed more before breakfast today than the beginner has even tried. Of course he has failed more than the beginner has tried. He fails every single day over and over again, and that's what makes him great. Habit number four is learn to use leverage. We have financial leverage, we have technological leverage, and we have human capital. And habit number five is take 100% full responsibility for everything about your life. Your situation right now is a result of the choices that you have made. And yes, everybody starts in different positions. We all have different challenges, but the way that we can overcome those is saying, this is the situation I'm in. I'm taking full responsibility. What do I want to do next? Now, I want to say one more thing. Changing your financial future is amazing. It's going to have a big impact on you, on your self-esteem, on your family, on your community, on your options in life. But the real gift of this journey is becoming a different person, becoming the kind of person who naturally produces so much value for other people that you make millions in return. So strive not to become a man of success or a woman of success, but a man or woman of value. And even if you do this and everything gets taken away from you, the kind of person you become, that's a greater reward than money could ever be. And you'll now become the person who can just stand right back up and do it all over again. So those are five millionaire habits that have made a tremendous impact in my life. Again, I went from making $1,000 for 200 hours of work to making this before breakfast most days and having a seven figure business and seven or eight or nine streams of income coming in. Just a completely different future. Now, I remember when I got started on this journey, I was reading the book, Think and Grow Rich, and I took my car in to get repaired. And the guys in the repair shop saw this book and they laughed at me and they said, good luck with that. So it doesn't take money to make money. It takes courage to make money. Stepping out and doing what others will laugh at and staying with it long enough. And again, we're not talking 30, 40 years here, but give me five to 10 years and you won't even recognize your old life, okay? So get started on that path today. Keep taking the steps every day. Let go of the outcome. Focus on your millionaire habits. Keep doing those. In five years, your life will be completely different. In 10, you'll be making millions of dollars if you're starting from scratch. Anybody can do it. It's all about consistent repetition of habits. So let me know in the comments, do you do any of these right now? And are you gonna start doing any after watching this video? Also, don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you want more content like this. And if you have any ideas for videos you'd like to see in the future, go ahead, throw them down there. And do me a favor and like this video for the algorithm so we can keep making more awesome free YouTube content for you. That's all for today. It's Christian, the Work From Anywhere guy. See ya on the next one.